Hey guys, my name is Matt Johnson and I am so hugely excited to share this video with you today. Honestly, I am so pumped because this is a video that I've been planning on making for about a year and a half. Seriously, back whenever I did my first video blog ever aimed at helping wedding filmmakers, a review of the Sony a7S II. In that video, I said that I wanted to film a behind the scenes of a wedding. So that way you can see me in the real world on a real wedding filming real people and you can understand how I do it and hopefully it will help you be a better wedding filmmaker yourself. Well, I am so pleased to announce that I finally did that. I brought my friend Paul along to film the behind the scenes of me and my wife filming a wedding. Now you may be noticing at this point that this video is only 20-ish minutes long and you're probably thinking to yourself, man, Matt, aren't weddings all day? Shouldn't the behind the scenes be like hours and hours long? Don't worry, I did film hours and hours and I have hours and hours of behind the scenes footage. But for now, I just posted a wedding trailer to my channel last week for my friends Noah and Mallory, and it's called Not Just In Love, Enjoy With Each Other. And that is the wedding that I shot the behind the scenes of. And so I decided that instead of just posting a massive behind the scenes all at once, I would post just a behind the scenes of a wedding trailer. So this video in 20 minutes is a behind the scenes of only a minute long trailer. So I'm sure you can probably extrapolate out, oh crap, this is gonna be a really long behind the scenes whenever he releases the full one. But for now, I wanna just bring you a behind the scenes of how I filmed this wedding trailer. So if you're watching this video right now, please hit pause and go and open up a new tab and watch Not Just In Love, Enjoy With Each Other, Noah and Mallory's wedding trailer. So that way, whenever you're watching this behind the scenes video, you're not like, wait, Matt, what's going on here? What, is, what are you showing to me? Ideally, you will have that trailer that you've already seen and then you'll watch this one and you'll understand what's going on. I'll link to the wedding trailer up in the corner here and down in the description so you can hit pause right now. And now you've watched it and you can continue playing this video. I hope you did. I feel kind of like Dora the Explorer or something like that. Did you watch it? Good. And I don't actually know if you're talking to your computer screen or something like that. That's kind of weird. Anyways, let's jump right into the behind the scenes of the wedding trailer, starting with me and my wife talking about the gear that we shoot with on the wedding day. Let's talk through the gear that we're gonna be shooting with today. So we're both on the Sony a7S II. This is mine, this is Rachel's. We always shoot on the same one. I don't know why we do that, but that's just how we do it. In general, I am shooting wider, so I will be either on a 24 millimeter or a 50 millimeter, depending on what I need. Rachel will be tighter, usually on a 50 millimeter or a 135 millimeter. I love my 135. Yes, she does. I love my 135. She it's beautiful. It. And so this is kind of a hodgepodge of lenses. We got a Canon lens, we got a Sony lens, we have two Sigma art lenses. I don't know, we got a whole mess of them, but we're using adapters if we need to, to get what uh, to get the shots that we need. I find these lenses work well. At some point, I would dream of having an all cohesive lens set, but it hasn't happened yet. We're not perfect, I'm sorry. Okay, you can and we see. have other lenses, but this is just what we carry with us like during prep and like get establishing shots is what we shoot on. It'll change a little bit and we'll talk about that when we get to ceremony, it'll be different lenses and when we get to dancing, it'll be different lenses. But for starters, starting out, if I can have a 50 and a 24, I am good all day. I can shoot on those two lenses and be totally happy. But that comes the caveat that I do have a second shooter that can get me those tighter shots. Yeah. So I'm focusing on like close emotion, faces, a lot of intimate interaction, like, like the hands when they're tucking each other, the rings and like all that stuff. Details. So Details. And I am closer, so if like I don't need to get in the way of like the photographer, I can be a little farther off and I can still get head and shoulders, and that's fine. Couple of things that we keep in our bags at all times. For Rachel, she has a lens cleaning cloth and I give her an ND filter so she can just have that with her for whenever she needs it. A magnetic one, so it'll it'll match all my lenses. I also have um, a mirror that I just use for trick shots, um, just because I like it. Um, and then my water usually and a couple lenses. And Matt carries in my shoulder bag here, which I'm about to put on. Ah, I'm gonna drop it first on the ground though, because I'm really coordinated. Let me tell you, my shoulder bag. If I Depending on which lens I'm shooting, I will have the other lens in the bag. So in this case, I'm starting with the 24 millimeter. So the 50 is in the bag. Lens cap, everything is already off, so I can grab it quickly if I need to. This bag will protect it from dust. I have the other adapter that I need, and I also carry a lens blower because there's never you never know whenever you're going to get some dust on your sensor that you need to blow it off. 
and eventually I'll give Rachel one too. I haven't done that yet. I know I'm a bad husband. Also, I carry around Mr. Prism because it's a cheap and effective way to get some really pretty reflection lens shots there. I think that might be showing up in your shot. Cool. So is there anything else? Oh, we also carry a buttload of batteries. Yeah, totally. So we have our charge batteries. We charge everything beforehand. We have 12 Sony NPFW50 batteries, which may sound like overkill, but hey, if you're filming like a 12 hour wedding day and you got two A7S2s, it's good to have a lot of batteries. And we will charge these as needed throughout the day, especially with Paul here, because we're all shooting on the A7S2. We're gonna need probably a bit more batteries than what we brought, so we're gonna charge all day. But that's not hard, especially considering that we're at the same venue all day, so we can set them up in a room, plug them in, and be able to access them whenever we need to. Okay, at this point here, everything is basically set up and ready to go, but because nothing super important is happening yet, they are just doing the wedding rehearsal. So Rachel is gonna go get some establishing shots of the grounds and things like that, and she's gonna check on the rehearsal and see if there's any tweaks or changes we need to make to how they're standing or anything like that. She's gonna help run that and organize that. I, meanwhile, am gonna fly the drone because this is perfect time, the sun is not super high in the sky yet, the lighting looks really good, and it's the drone. Do I really need an excuse to fly the drone? I don't think so. It's wonderful and I want to fly it all the time. I don't think it's any secret to anybody in this room that these two human beings are special. That's good. You guys are doing great. <laughs> I appreciate how fair you're being. Better get everything and then not use it than not get it. For the Phantom 4, I have the Polar Pro ND filters. This is their Vivid Cinema series that comes with a polarizer built in as well as an ND. And I'm gonna put the ND16 on it here because I'm shooting in D-Log, which has a fixed ISO of 500, and I'm also in bright sunlight. So that seems like a good idea. Let me face this way so you get a little bit of side light on me there. Does that look super cinematic now? It's so pretty. I love the feel of a new drone. Something special about it. <sighs> now, I don't know exactly what I'm gonna be filming until I get up there. I know I'm gonna film the buildings. I know I'm gonna film the tree. I know I've got some basic things like that. But sometimes you don't really know everything you're gonna film until you're just in the air. And then you're looking at it like, oh yeah, that is pretty. Oh good, okay. But until that happens, it's kind of a, kind of a crap shoot. 16 satellites locked, ready to go. All right, moment of truth here. See if I can crash this thing. And you're supposed to let it sit there for a second, and it'll document. Drone's coming back in for a landing now. Got some really good shots of the venue and the buildings. There wasn't anything else really crazy that I wanted to film and that I thought that would look really cool with the drone. So that's all that we're doing. There's sometimes things where you're like, oh, this is incredible, I need to film this. But sometimes you're like, oh, this is a pretty venue. I'll get some drone shots without going crazy. Lots of couples are in love, but Noah and Mallory are in joy for each other. They, it, it, it's not that they just love each other, they like each other. They're best friends. And it's beautiful to see how that flows out. You two model what it means to be joyfully united in Christ together. There we go. <laughs> this is what it's like being Noah's height. Wow, so great. We're walking together, happy, laughing. Ha! Ah! No, not like that. <laughs> and you look back at him, that's good. Oh, wow. There we go. This looks so good in slow motion. You have no idea.
This is my Russian tilt shift lens. It's 80 millimeter and it looks beautiful. So hot. The slow mo looks so slay right now. That's what the kids say. I'm saying it right. Looks so slow. I am so very shook about this weather and this wind, this moment. This wind looks so good in slow motion. There it is. <laughs> little debrief here after the ceremony we were not planning on taking the couple out until after they have eaten so around 6 30 but because there's now a storm coming in and my phone is telling me severe thunderstorm watch in your county that expires in five hours and there's a really big thunderstorm line coming this way we said hey can we get you guys for five minutes out here in the field so grant took them out there we followed along got some great stuff and then i jumped in and i was like okay can we shift this a little bit here and me and the photographer work together to get some really beautiful images that i'm really excited about i'm going to interrupt this behind the scenes right here because this is the point where everything starts to go wrong on the wedding day yes my dreams of filming a perfect wedding for you where i have no problems at all and i'm showing you the behind the scenes and i'm like everything's always perfect for me on the wedding day there's no problems at all when you're me that's all been ruined because this is the point where everything starts to get crazy. So here is me talking at 10 a.m. on the wedding day about my grand plans for how the wedding reception is going to unfold. So we are now at the reception venue, which is right here. They're gonna do dancing out here on the deck. They're gonna have dinner inside and everything else is happening outdoors. So toasts are happening outdoors. The bouquet and garter toss are happening outdoors. Everything except for the cake cutting and everybody eating is happening outdoors. The reason being for that is because we filmed a wedding here four months ago, I want to say, and the chandeliers inside the reception hall have horrible flickering to the point that even a photographer who was working on the wedding with us that day was getting banding in her photos. That's how bad the flickering was. So to combat that, I told the bride and groom about that because they're such good friends and because they care about us and our creativity and making sure that we get a good film. They were like, oh yeah, we can totally just move everything outside. And I'm like, Bless you guys, this is wonderful. So by talking to the couple early, building those relationships and generating that, you can affect huge changes in the wedding that will make your wedding film look better, which makes me so happy. And now that you've watched that and seen 10 a.m. out, how excited he is, how he has everything planned out, how he's prepared for every eventuality, now I want you to watch Matt about eight-ish hours later when everything starts to go crazy. All right, so if you look over this way, you'll see that there is actually a massive thunderstorm about to hit the wedding. If you look at the forecast this morning, 10% chance of rain. And I just held up a five, but that's because I'm holding my guide cam. So double, double that, 10% chance of rain. And this is happening, and it looks kind of like a tornado. So it's cool, but this is what happens at a wedding. And on a wedding day, you cannot predict anything. So we're just gonna roll with it. They may end up having to move the entire dance floor and everything inside. They did. At which point we're gonna we'll have to do it, do it. Yeah. and it'll work out. At the very minimum, it's looking like they're gonna have to move toasts inside. Nice. They had to do that too. So we're gonna need to set up the light inside. We're gonna need to figure out angles and set up for that and run from there. But hey, I did not promise you a perfect wedding today. I promised you chaos. A real wedding. A real, a wedding, real wedding. With real people and craziness. And lightning. And lightning. Has any lightning struck in the background yet? Can I just stand here? Until it happens. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting on it, right? I'm waiting on Matt, it. Matt, we need the light. Come on. I know. Okay, we don't Come have time. On. Come on. There's some. Ah. So 
So in terms of surprises, what we learned earlier is that the bridesmaids and groomsmen have purchased confetti cannons. And they were telling us that they wanted to use them after the toast. And we said, well, that's not super compelling. Could you do something else? And so now we have heard back that they have changed it to whenever the bride and groom enter the reception. So they're going to walk in and there's going to be confetti cannons going off and it's going to look super awesome. The only criteria that they were given was for the entrance, it has to be indoors so they can clean it up more easily so they don't want it on the patio. So we are going to be indoors, but I'm hoping that's going to look really cool. For the reception entrance, they're going to come in through these doors. I'm going to be on the glide cam backing up as they're coming in. And Rachel's going to be getting detailed shots over there. Hopefully it all works out. Things are always kind of crazy. Cool. Are you going to be right here? Yeah, yeah. More or less? Check yeah, yeah, that's great. I was going to back up a little bit just to get that, because they're going to confetti cannon up on the sides, I'm assuming. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please join me. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. supposed to be like this wedding where I'm just like, it's a beautiful wedding, perfect day, nothing wrong, here's how we do it, so great. But no. with weddings, you just gotta roll with the punches. Yeah. You know? Oh, I'm rolling with it right now. We're I'm, rolling. We're rolling, that's all we can do. Just hit roll, let it happen. You just roll it. And it's a wedding. It's gonna be beautiful. Now we've got some more dancing and then they've got an exit coming up here yeah, pretty soon. So we'll film that. It's going to look beautiful, I'm sure. Hopefully it won't rain too hard while that's happening, but maybe we'll get some lighting in the background. How incredible would that be? And then they're going to drive off into the sunset and we're going to drive the hour and a half back to Dallas and sleep for approximately 15 hours, if I was to guess. That's about what I'm feeling right now after today, but it's been an amazing day. Noah and Mallory, you guys are awesome. So for the exit wise, me and Grant are going to walk 
in front of you two. Yeah. It's going to be We're gonna kiss in the so middle. romantic. You can kiss in the middle we're if you want to. Kiss in the end. Kiss the end, yeah. It's going to be so hot. Lots of tongue. And we're gonna Lots of really, really nasty making <laughs> out. And then we're going to hope that Noah can drive the manual away from the yeah. so. There's no guarantees here. <laughs> but really know. You know, it might stall and die. I mean, I, I'd prefer it. it once or twice. If you can completely burn out Sam's clutch, I would laugh oh my God. so hard. I'd practice a little bit. That's we good. good. We should be good. That's good. Are we good? Let's go! Don't hit me! That's one of the best exits ever I've ever filmed. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this video has been helpful to you and giving you some great insight into how I film a wedding and how I handle things whenever they get a little crazy on the wedding day. And like I said at the start of this video, this is just a behind the scenes of the wedding trailer. I have a, another huge, massive, probably multi-part long behind the scenes showing how I film all the parts of the wedding day. But for now, I wanted to bring this to you because I have other paid clients with videos I need to finish and I can't just make fun YouTube videos all day, but I really do wish that I could. So if you wanna watch the longer behind the scenes video or if you want me to film more behind the scenes videos of weddings in the future, please leave me a comment below letting me know that. I will also be posting a link up here in the corner and down in the description whenever I do post the full behind the scenes video. Next, I wanna give a huge shout out and thank you to my friend Paul Bailey because he is awesome and hung with me and Rachel the entire day and filmed this incredible behind the scenes video. So if you wanna check out his work, I'll link to him in the description of this video. Also, on an unrelated note, a ton of you have been asking me about my trip to Iceland and how it went and if I filmed anything there and the answer is, I filmed so much stuff in Iceland. It is crazy and it is beautiful and I'm so excited to share it with you. But I have a ton of other videos that I have to finish before I can finish editing the Iceland stuff and post it, but that is coming. If you would like to see some behind the scenes though and some clips and photos from my trip, I've been posting a ton of stuff to my Instagram page at instagram.com slash whoismat and to my Facebook fan page, which I will link to in the description of this video. Please know that I am very excited to share all the videos that I have from Iceland and they are coming. But for now, with this video, as always, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave one below or get in touch with me through my website, whoismat.com. It is also a huge, like massively helpful to me if you would consider liking this video and if you're not subscribed, if you would consider subscribing to me so you can watch more videos like this in the future. As a reminder to you, I am also offering one-on-one -on -one filmmaker consulting in hour and a half long increments. So if you wanna to talk to me about anything that I covered in this video or you wanna to talk to me about wedding filmmaking in general, or how to book more clients, or how to charge more, or how to advertise, or how to be successful in running a filmmaking business, I would love to talk to you. And you can sign up for that at whoismat.com slash consulting. And very last thing, I promise you can check out my wedding film production company, Filmstrong Productions, at filmstrong.com. And yes, it is there that I posted the wedding trailer that I did this whole behind the scenes about. So in case you didn't watch it, one last chance, here's the trailer, I'll put it in this little corner right here and you can click on it and watch it if you want to. That'd be really great. If not, whatever, totally cool. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.